We're going to go to chapter 13 now. Let me start the slideshow. So chapter 13 is F distributions and one-way ANOVAs. So for hypothesis testing, comparing averages between more than two groups, statisticians have developed a method called analysis of variance. We call it ANOVA. In this chapter, you're gonna study about ANOVA. We're gonna do the, the easiest, a single factor or a one-way ANOVA. So the purpose of a one-way ANOVA is to determine if the existence of a statistically significant difference is among several groups of means. Again, this is if you're testing more than two means. The test actually uses variance to help determine if the means are equal or not. In order to perform a one-way ANOVA, you have to have five basic assumptions. The first, each population from the sample is taken is assumed to be normal. Number two, all samples are randomly selected and independent. Three, the populations are assumed to have equal standard deviations or variance. Four, the factor is a character, excuse me, is a categorical variable and the response is a numeric variable. Variable. So we'll see this in just a minute. So when you're thinking of the factors, that means like if I was looking at different kinds of eye color or I don't know, we're going to look at an example in a minute of like different kinds of soil covers, that would be the factor because it's something that's been put into categories. The response is the different samples you get from these categories. So the null and alternative hypothesis. These are pretty easy. This will kind of look different than you've seen. It might look a little bit similar to what we saw in chi-squared. So for the null, so based on how many different groups you have, you're saying that mean one equals mean two equals mean three, all the way to the final mean of how many groups you have. So the alternative, at least two of the groups means, mean one, two or three or whatever mean are not equal. That's all it's saying. So null is all your means are equal. Your alternative is at least one mean is different. So let's look at examples of null hypothesis by box plots. Okay, so for A, right up here in the pink, the hypothesis, the null hypothesis is true. All the means are the same and the differences are due to random variation. But look at B, the null is not true and the means are not the same. The differences are too large to be due are too large to be due random variations. Because if you look, one's a lot lower than the other one, than the middle one. But if you look at the top, the A one, they're all pretty similar. So let's talk about the F distribution and the F ratio. The distribution used for this hypothesis test is a new one. It's called the F distribution and it was named after Sir Ronald Fisher, an English statistician. An F statistic is a ratio, basically a fraction. There are two sets of degrees of freedom, one for the numerator, one for the denominator. So for example, if F follows an F distribution with the number of degrees of freedom for the numerator is four, and the number of degrees of freedom for the denominator is 10, then it's F tilde F4, 10, comma 10. All right. So this is what an ANOVA table looks like. And please don't freak out, you're not doing this by hand. We have a website that will help you and it makes it so pretty that you don't have to worry about doing this by hand. But basically what we're doing is we're looking at variation for the factors, which is between the means and the error, which is in the means themselves. And then we do a sum of squares degrees of freedom, mean squared, and at the end we get the F test. So to calculate the F ratio, two estimates of variance are made. So the first one is the variance between samples, an estimate of sigma squared, that is the variance of a sample means multiplied by N. So what it is, it's your variance of all those samples and you multiply it by N when the sample sizes are the same. If the sample sizes are different, the variance between the samples is weighted to account for the different sample sizes. The variance is also called variation due to the treatment and or explained variation. Variation within samples. An estimate of sigma squared that is the average of the sample variances is also known as the pooled variance. When the sample sizes are different, the variance within samples is weighted. 
The variance is also called the variation due to errors or unexplained variation. So SS between is the sum of squares that represent the variation among the different samples. SS within is the sum of squares that represent the variation within the samples that is due to chance. Okay, to find the sum of squares mean, you add together the squared quantities that in some cases may be weighted. We use the sum of squares to calculate the sample variance and the sample standard deviations descriptive statistics. MS is the mean squared. MS between is the variance between groups. MS within is the variance within groups. So F equals MS between over MS within. We are never, ever, ever going to do this by hand. I just wanted you to kind of get a general background of where that comes from, but never, ever do it by hand. So the notation. The one way you know of a hypothesis test is always right-tailed because the left larger F values are way out in the right-tailed of the F distribution curve and tend to make us reject the null. The notation for the F distribution is F tilde F degrees of freedom numerator comma Degree to degrees of freedom denominator, where df num equals df between and df denominator equals df within. And you're going to get that from the table, so don't worry about that. The mean of the F distribution is the mean equals to the free degrees of the freedom of the num numerator divided by the degrees of freedom denominator minus 1. So let's use the internet in the next video.